Hockey Nation fans, welcome back to the Hockey Nation live show with Coach directly from the booth and, of course, directly from the West Coast, from California, Michael DeVellano. Michael, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Pierre. Another Pierre. show today with, uh, of course, we are on the 31 days marathon with 31 different teams. We are back today with the Pittsburgh Penguins, where very interesting what we want to talk about today because I believe we have some, uh, they are maybe at the end of the end. Um, I will tell you what I'm thinking about because I used to do a little bit. I look about their team. It would be very interesting to know also your insight about the Pittsburgh. But of, um, of course, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of big news around the league. Uh, other fact, we have to go all the way to the East Coast Hockey League, the ECHL. Yesterday, they decided to, uh, you know, the yeah, Northern Division uh, not going to come back to play hockey for the upcoming season. I believe on the, I believe they supposed to start in two weeks, three weeks. I think December 11, 12. Um, that was supposed to be uh, the beginning of the season, but uh, unfortunately, uh, Brandon. Brandon Adirondack and um, Worcester and uh, New Fogland uh, reading. They decide just to give up and then not coming back this year. Um, I, I think the reality is setting in that without fans, these are gate-driven teams, and there's no point in operating something and you're going to lose three to $5 million dollars on. You know, uh, last night I was talking with someone and said, it's just the beginning. It's the beginning. Like the AHL, I don't know if it plays. The OH, I mean, even us, I believe there's enough. When Once you see, you know, hockey, in even pro ranks, it's kind of a copycat sport. Everybody works together and talks a little bit as much as they compete against each other. Yeah. And I think what's going to happen is the ECHL is going to influence the AHL. The AHL, you know, the NHL guys are going to say, listen, we have to develop our players. And I think this goes back to that trend we see of, guys that maybe wouldn't sign their entry-level contract or signing their entry-level contract. So you're going to see a combination of bigger rosters for COVID and they develop their own guys under the auspices of practice. And then you're going to see the AHL, probably a limited slate of players. They're not going to sign the older guys. They're going to go a lot younger. Yeah. It, 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 unfortunately, you know, that's a reality. And I think, And they may not play. The age of may not play. Like I think they they may they may come up with their own bubble, but I mean no fans. The only reason AHL can play is because the contracts are picked up by the NHL in part. Yep. We'll see what happens. You know, um, you have a lot of discussion about that. Talking about, you know, bubble and all the game and everything like that. I just have a you know the They have a discussion yesterday between the NHLPA executive board for over two hours and a half uh, wow. yesterday. And, but yeah, no vote about the fact like, you know, the, the player are upset about the decision with the owners. They request, you know, the escrow cap is 20% next season. And um, that would be something they have to vote also this different money. So uh, the NHL tried to looking for another $300 million dollars and saving. How, uh, how about we don't play? Like, what's that circumstance look like? Because that's the alternative. You know, if you're if you're a if you're a non gate like 50% or more for some of these teams is gate. If you like, if you look at the revenue of the teams, they probably get 25 to 35 million from TV. There, some teams are only making 70 to 80 million in total revenues, like the lower end ones. Like, what's Florida's revenue? 60, 70? Like, they're probably automatic. Like, Phoenix is absolutely, <laughs> their total revenue might be 100 million dollars and the cap's 80. Yeah. How do you operate a team? Like, <laughs> and that's, that's 30 million gate, I bet. Like Florida's probably got the worst gate, right? One the worst, yes, of course. But again, that at the end of the day, you know, let's yeah, be but, realistic. <laughs> so another decision about that. The, the flip side, you know, um, the plug can maybe talk about this, but if tomorrow the NHL you have no season, yeah, how the plug lose the money? 
Yeah, it makes no sense what they're, you know, if they're, they can complain all they want, but yeah, to exactly. me, I think, you know, the, the definitive, you know, the, I've, you've probably seen the Forbes list and they give the valuations, but I think they also break down. I mean, this is annoying as usual. Good. So we'll see you, what happens. You can see the revenues, right? <laughs> if, if their crap site doesn't get in the way. So you look like, yes, there's valuation, but then there's revenue. Yeah. You know, if we go down to the bottom, I'm probably underestimating. Let's look at the worst. Arizona is 102 million. So I was actually pretty accurate. And the cap is 81.5. Okay. Well now guess what? This is, this is 30 million now. <laughs> without gains. So you go, okay. Revenue for per fan is $12 gate receipts, 24 million. So you go, okay, guys, we're all taking a haircut here. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. You know what I mean? Like, for a couple of days, we're going to see what they get. They talk about also, like, most thinking now is going to be a 60, um, a 60 season game. The funny thing about that, if it's a case, uh, Montreal have to play 10 times against the other team in their division. I just like to point out how junk Forbes website is, but the data is good. So again, look at Florida, right? Look at their gate, 17 million <laughs> player expenses, 78. Yeah. So they're getting like, you know, it's really bizarre how they get it's arena revenues for use for debt payments. That's crazy. Cause so I, I think the players got to be realistic. You, you yeah. take away the gate for some of those teams. It's a check to for like thirty to fifty million. Yeah, like, like Arizona is already a check for twenty to thirty million by those owners every year. But again, you know, we talk about a few teams versus the rest of the team where they they are more solid. But at the end of the day, yeah, the, the Rangers, the, owner, the Leafs, the Canadians the owners request money for saving money because they know they're losing money. So at the end of the day, um, that's what happening about that one over there. So. Yeah. We'll see, you know, I mean, it's just going to go around talking mm -hmm. about difficult financially. The Tampa Bay Lightning um, let go 30 employees yesterday. Uh, the front office, and maybe everybody around the, you know, could be some people work inside the office, everything like that. So 30 people get out of the job yesterday from the Tampa Bay Lightnings, uh, where we know the salary cap is already a problem right now for that part. So uh, it's another thing we have to check out about. Maybe not the only team is going to do that, or maybe other team um, is going to to do to do that, the same thing. Talking a bit about around the league, uh, the CB uh, Columbus Blue Jacket um, general manager confirmed he don't see any problem to sign uh, the RFA Pierre Luc Dubois. It's just a question of time. I think that's a reality. That's true. They just need to figure out how many games they're going to play the upcoming season, everything like that. So they wait for. Dubois, but that's something is going to be signed for sure before the season start. I don't see uh, other effect like could could happen. Yeah, you know I mean, I don't see what why not. I didn't it's think it's gotta happen. I mean, no, he's a he's a real good player, and they that's their best player, and it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, talking about um, the league. Um, yeah, the kid, the, the player from San Jose, Shark, got an injury. You talked about him yesterday, Thomas uh, Erdo. Yeah. That's why I was saying, like, you know, people don't – I mean, we all see the drop. I think part of the drop is because of those role players being gone because they signed the big Eric Carlson contract. Yeah. But definitely the hurdle injury, you know, the health of Couture, Hurdle, and Meyer is very important because they, they were all hurt last year, if I recall. Was Couture – is. So again, yeah. So Couture, even Couturier missed time. He only played fifty-two games. Yeah. So you you had Eric Carlson play fifty-six, Logan Couture play fifty-two, Thomas Hurdle play forty-eight. Like that just takes a huge chunk out of your lineup, and there's yeah. no way to replace it. You know. I know the and the news is um, it's about the NHL the rookie from the. Um, the um, Zazel, Zazel was the name. Tim, uh, yeah, he's going to play for the World Junior 
uh, Germany team um, in this Might Sunday. Well. So uh, I think be... I think guys like that are going to need to get all the the games in they can. I guess. <laughs> yeah, talking about the 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 talk about the gym. I'm going to give you the training camp players. I know you sent me a, a nice video of the oh uh, my FG god happening in the world. So I'm going to give you a roster for the goalies. Just give you an idea. Maybe you can jump on that part if you want to. Uh, the goalies are Brad Brushu, Dylan Garen, Taylor Gauthier, Dristan Lennox, and Devon Levy. Anybody um, of them? <clears throat> Nobody jumps out at me. I mean, one from Kamloops, one from Brent George, and um, NC Northwestern Levy is a draft from the Florida Panthers. Uh, 2020, uh, seven seven round, uh, but um, I, I think I think the they are not like experiencedly like a lot of and the goalie they don't have a lot of experience as a goalie honestly. Oh, Brochu, got it. Yeah, Brett Brochu, he's London Knights, right? Mm -hmm. So he's a real he's a pretty good goalie, but he's young, isn't he? He's yeah. an O two, and I guess they're not that young anymore. Um, it's interesting because the, the Levy kid is, did he go NCAA? He's uh, from Quebec yeah. though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, I mean, Goche, Goche is draft, he's draft eligible and so is Lennox. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I don't know, like, is there anyone that has the inside out of these guys? It's interesting that two of these guys are six feet, one's six feet and one's 5'11". I know. I know the different uh, the goal is cited on that, but if you jump on the defenseman, I'm going to give you a couple oh of names. Oh my god, the are ridiculous! Well, I mean, they are Justin <laughs> Barron, uh, Justin Barron, awesome. Owen Barron. They have Jimmy Tristel, Gaten Gully. Um, they Gaten have Gaten is great, right? Dominic <laughs> Arley. Another draft pick, right for Dallas. Yeah. I just dropped a little bit more, like you know, they have also Ryan Oroki. Um, that's yep. work is drafted by Minnesota. Yeah. And then you have Brendan Schneider over there. Drafted uh, by the Rangers. So Jordan that's Spence is drafted for the LA Kings. Yeah. And, uh, so, um, I think solid, they are really solid. Like they have at least five great defensemen, um, uh, maybe six. Think about, let's go back to the top of that list. Bo Byram, right? Like Bo Byram, Kale McCarr. Tell me the difference between them. Yeah, a couple of years. <laughs> That's the difference, right? Drysdale, we know, went very high in the draft. Justin Barron had an injury, you know, uh, riddled year. But man, like Colorado got a great offensive potential defenseman there with good size. I really like Caden Gould, who was drafted by Montreal. Like they're stacked. Like, and yeah. then Braden Schneider was drafted high. And you can't, you know, Thomas Harley is probably going to be in the NHL in a year. Like he's not very far off. He's like a six foot four defenseman that can skate and got so they're they're crazy on D. Yeah, and then you have also Ryan O'Rourke. And Ryan O'Rourke, yeah, he's like no bum. Like he's a good defenseman. I don't um, know. If, will he stick? Is the question because one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six guys ahead of those guys. Yeah. On forward, I'll just give you not all the list, but the players really get out of this. It's Maverick Burke, uh, Quentin Byfield. Wow. <laughs> that would be that. that. Kirby Doc might be the best of everybody. That He's, like, so good. <laughs> Tyson Forster. Well, Forster, as we talked about yesterday from Barry, and he yeah. he's – now he's – you know, it's – don't be surprised if he doesn't make the team. Because he's he is not an amazing skater. He's a big guy, and he's very important to Barry. There is a risk that just based upon the rest of the talent that team. Then you have Ridley, Greg, Dylan, Holloway. Holloway's awesome. Zev Jarvis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Zev Jarvis will be on the team. Here's my prediction. Peyton Grebs. Peyton should be on the team. I mean, he's he's like such a dynamic player. He's Rick Lapierre. If he's healthy, he's in, right? Connor McMichael. Obviously going to be in. Was one of the leading scorers last year. Dawson Mercer. <laughs> he might not make the team. No, he was on the team last year, so he'll be there. Alec Newhook. 
I mean, what a steal by Colorado, first of all. And I think he's got to be on that team. Jacob Pelsi. I, I don't know if you've – have you seen him, Pierre? I did not see him. This guy was a steal by Col- by Calgary. He is, like, very talented. Now, does that translate into NHL production? At some point, I think low end, the guy's a 40, 45-point player. Then we have Cole Perfetti. Cole Perfetti will be on the team. Samuel <laughs> Kulain. So this is a weird one for me. Um, we're going to talk about him today. His, you know, his dad, Patrick Poulin, he, he can score. He's a talented player and he's big. I think he'll be on the team. I don't know what you think. But think he, so. he, it's a little risky, right? I think he'll definitely be there because he's from Quebec, which they tend to, which sounds strange, but they tend to pick players regionally. They want representation from all the different leagues. Um. So I think it'll be him and LaPierre for sure. Um, but, you know, I would think in any, given the depth in this team, he's a risk of not making it. Jack Quinn. I, I, I'd be very surprised if he's not on it. Ryan Suzuki. Should play in the top line. <laughs> Philip Tomazino. I don't think he sticks. And Connor Zari. Well, you missed someone really important. But he's not there. So Shane think. Wright. Who? Shane Wright. Shane Wright will be on this team. <laughs> uh, yeah, because of course, yeah, of course, he's, he's yeah. going to be a force. Of course, he's a little bit like what, you know, that for yeah, those players been after that. So they're going totally. to be. So, uh, be so Shane Wright will definitely from Kingston will be on the team. He was the exceptional status. He scored over a point a game last year as a 16 year old. Um, he's Nathan McKinnon 2.0. Guy's so good. Connor Zari, really good player. I, I think Connor will be on the team. He was a high draft pick, and I think Cal- Calgary got another steal. Like they have twenty uh, player forward right now. That so that's really tight. Like, and did we talk about Dylan Cousins? So, like Dylan Cousins, th- this is an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> They could field two teams, Pierre. Yeah. Maybe they should. Maybe they should field two teams. But we, very interesting about so they have a lot of power on offensive. <laughs> defensive. And they have I don't the goalie, know what is, but... as only the goalie to be set. So we'll see what happened with Torigny, what well, he's going to pick it up for next year. But uh, they have a good representation there for the next um we missed one player too, which is Gage Gonzalez from Everett. He's our only player there. <laughs> and Gage was a second round pick to Tampa. And he can score. Yeah. There is a, you know I me, mean? I, I gave the most of the name like the first round pick. Oh, sure. Yeah. So I did not mention like the third round, second round, or players maybe play next year or, you know, the draft number 2021, 2022. No, I get it. I, I, I think about this like 10 right? Right? It's 2022. We still have two years. Two years, Pierre. It's crazy. And well, he might be I, I he, all right, let's let's think about this. What if Shane Wright wasn't on this team? Do you think it's possible? It could. Just because he's young. Yeah, he could. But he's as good as anybody there, I bet. Uh, yeah, but again, like you have a lot of you know that you can go for 15 plus solid. It's like, nuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like solid. You have like, you know, it's like if you think about this, like, like number two, number seven, number thirteen, seventeen, eighteen, sixteen, ten, eight. Jesus Christ, dude! It's crazy. I, mean, I don't count everything over twenty right now. They have at least seven more. So I'm going to propose that what they do is the cuts form another team because the cuts from this team would be probably as good as any team in the whole thing. I bet you we could sit there. You have you have 50 players that are in this bubble, I think. I think that was the number that I heard, and it's for 50 days. So you could have two teams of 20, no problem, with your eyes closed, and they would be – you could stack them both. Yeah, 
Russia, Russia will be good also. USA will be good also. For sure. But that's, you know, I think if you looked at the depth of Russia, the best players on Russia are amazing. Yeah. So that part's like, they are scary. Like they'll have, um, you know, the top goalie in the tournament. They'll have guys like Amirov is like showing that he's elite. Like they have a lot of ability on that team. Russia's no joke. No, of course they, they have like, you know, and then, you know, and for USA, they have a lot of good players there, but, um, you know, I think Spencer Knight would be still there. I believe so. And your goal. Yeah, Dustin Wolf is definitely done. What about what's going on with Dustin Wolf? Well, he's, he's on the U S team. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like, you still, uh, you still, he's on, he's with, uh, Calgary Flames, right? Yeah, they drafted him like last year. Yeah, yeah, he's brand new. I think he signed his. Did he? I think he signed his entry level deal. Yeah, I think so because they said Calgary Flames, you know. Yeah, he. Yeah, they signed him to a three year deal. So Dusty, um, shout out. He's maybe his dad's watching this. I don't know. Is it Alex, Rasik? Alex Rasik is nothing to do with the player, right? That's too young. I, I don't know. Um, that's a good question. <clears throat> USA Hockey Roster World Junior Selection. Let's see. Is that going on? Yeah. Yeah, I have it. So, I mean, I he was the, you know, the backup last year. Um, do you think it would be know? again. <laughs> it would be again if Spencer Knight is there. Yeah, I don't know why I don't see the roster. Oh, that's the last year roster, isn't it? I have a, me, I have the one for the summer. So it was like Comesso and Logan Steele seen the two other goalie with Spencer Knight and Dustin Wolf. So Knight and Wolf's going to make it for, I don't see the two other one to make it. Defensively, they have like uh, Brooke Faber, um, Dominic Fensor, Drew Ellison, Ryan Johnson, Tyler Cleveland, Jackson Lacombe, uh, Case McCarty, Jake Sanderson, Andrew Skinner from OHL, Jaden Straubel from Montreal Canadian. Um, after that, they have Henry Tran, Alex that Vlasic. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Marshall Warren and Cameron York. Cam York's good. That's Jason York's son. So they have about three great, four great defensemen there. Like, Is you know, Johnson they, not on that team? What? The defenseman Johnson? I see. I didn't see this right now. But this is a summer, so maybe add. Oh, yeah, he's there, right? Johnson, Minnesota. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, isn't he? Uh, and he's, um, he's drafted by Buffalo? Yeah, Minnesota. No? Really? No, you're right. Yeah, Buffalo 30th or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So then, they, you know, forward, they have Thomas Bordelow, uh, Brandon Brisson, Cole Cofield, uh, Sam, I mean, Sam Collingelo, uh, Sam Collingelo, uh, John Farinensi, and then you have Shea, Sean Farrell. Um, just try to give you a big name if I know someone there. Uh, Arthur Kaliev, which of? Um, <laughs> have fun with that, boys. <laughs> I know. We can score, but Dylan Pedersen, um, Lukas Svechnikov or Svechkovsky. Yep. Yeah, Lucas is. Uh, do you remember Yogi Svechkovsky played yeah, for the? Yeah, yeah. His dad. So his dad is like the development coach at St. George College, which is yep. in the the CSSHL. And he, you know, he played in the WHL like Lucas. Um, and St. George is owned by Tom Gagliardi. At least it was up until a few weeks ago. But The last three is very good one. Luke Duck, Tuck. Tuck's obviously very good. Turcotts. And Trevor Zigras. Okay, so you've got like two superstar centermen for sure. Yeah. You've got a superstar winger in Cole Caulfield. And you got a lot of other talent up there. So they're good. 
they are good. <laughs> Not last like Canada forward. I think Canada is better, but the Canada other... is ridiculous, Pierre. Canada's defense, and you could not play any forwards and just play their defense. <laughs> exactly. So we'll see what could happen um, uh, over there. But I would give the edge in goaltending to the States. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Compared to Canada, of course. For sure. And then, you know, Russia, it's pretty tough to discount Russia. Like the goaltending in Russia is ridiculous. And we just saw them at that tournament. The uh, I mean, the Russian team ripped everybody. Uh, I don't know. Are you a uh, familiar or are you good for uh, maybe Brendan Oldby need your help this morning? If you why he's stuck at the border because he's too turtle cannot go through the border. His what? He's too turtle. His turtles. <laughs> so he, he need paper from the wild farm. Yeah, you can't bring those in. They have salmonella. <laughs> but you need to have like some. Um, uh, paper from the wildlife, <laughs> whatever they call it. So yeah, he, wildlife, uh, whatever. Yeah, we do that. Have to go there to do that. So anyway, short story. Of course, before we jump on the base, but I want to tell a little bit about the NHL history. Uh, what happening on this date, November nineteen, two thousand. So um, two thousand eighteen, in the blue, the snowy blues fire. The coach who. 2018, Mike Yo. Yep. On this date, 1981, the Vancouver Canucks defenseman play his 500th game with a big mustache. Lanny McDonald? With Vancouver Canucks. Oh, who had a big mustache with the Canucks? Arrow. Snaps? Yep. Oh. <laughs> But funny thing here, I did not know about that, but on the date in 2005, the Florida Panthers player score is 400 um, career goal. He most of the goal was with the Calgary Flames. Play also with the Toronto Maple Leaf. Neuendijk? Gary? Well, Roberts was? Oh, because, yeah, that makes sense. Gary Roberts, I forgot he was there. On... Um, I, not a big one, but that surprised me. That one, I, I think the trade, the further trade, the third trade in 1996, Stu Barn and Jason Woolley for the pink, the paints, Chris Well. Isn't that crazy? That's unbelievable. That's a horrible trade. I know. That's you think about this, like you know. But he's a six foot five. We needed a six foot five centerman. Let's give up the super talented Stu Barnes who plays two ways. How many times you believe in the, during the 21 century, how many times you see a game where one winger score five goals and his center have eight points and, and, and one game in 1983? Oh, 1983? Yeah. I mean, is that the, the Edmonton Oilers or is it? Yep. yep. Yeah. Is that Curry and Gretzky? Yep. You got it. Crazy, man. Was that like a 9-8 game or something? Yeah, on 19, 2007, uh, Larry Robinson got retired his jersey number 19 by the Montreal Canadian. Cool. Great defenseman. I know. He was a good coach, too. Yep. The former Janine Trophy winner, Reggie Limley, was born in Quebec City in November 19, 1954. Reggie Lemelin. Oh, my God. He had a great run in um, Calgary. And he even played in Boston, right? If you remember, like, at the beginning of the – Carrier history, Washington was never a good on this date in 1974. The Washington Caps and a 14 games winless straight by beating the California Golden Seals. Wow, four. What was the name of the coach? He became an announcer. Green? No, then the what he, he became a Hockey Canada announcer for a long time after that. He never really coached again. <laughs> Um, 1983, Bruce Hood became the first NHL referee to the official 1,000 game. But what happened to him two years after that in 1985? Oh, I don't know. Is that the uh, Donut Gate or no? That was um, someone else. He was the referee of the of the um, Gary Green was the Friday guy. Night, the Friday night, uh, the Friday night. How the they Eastern time, like uh, the Friday Easter time, what do you call it? Uh, it was a game between the the Montreal, Quebec, Quebec and Montreal about the 
two uh, bra uh, between uh, the oh, tail. Yeah, remember that game? Like the at the second period, the end of the second period, they have a general like everybody jump on the ice. Was that the end of bench clearing brawls? Yeah, so it was like uh, 1985, I believe. Was anyway, it was the last game of Bruce. Ooh. 84. 84. 84. Maybe not. It's oh, Friday Massacre, 1984 playoffs. Yeah. Is that it? Yep. Who was the on final, that? Oh, God, Friday, what a- the final score, Montreal 5, Quebec Nordic 2. After wow. two period, it was 2 0, I believe. <laughs> this is a gong show. Look at this. I see Wolf Paymon. <laughs> I see Alain Cote. I I have I still have the VHS tape. Do you? I I yeah. I, watched, I watched that game about two hundred times in my life. Um. So Larry Robinson was paired up with Wilf Paymont. Yeah. It, the first fight, the first time they finished the the the, the shut down the the, the big fight, uh, mm-hmm. the big bra is because um, uh, Slater Louis Slater. Louis Slager, oh my God! He punched Jean Amel uh, on the face, and uh, Amel just dropped down completely. It was a um, it was a bad punch because the guy was not looking. Anyways, he was not supposed to punch. Anyway, it was a bad thing. And then they come back on the ice. Now they're going to starting to talking about the all the 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 penalties, and they said that. Uh, Game misconduct, uh, game misconduct, Peter Stashney, Del Hunter. Now Bergeron was like screaming. And then Mike Murphy walked, skate around Wally Weir, and then Weir and McPhee restart the second the second one um, between the at the beginning of the third period. So all the way and then um Mark Hunter jumped on Tell on his brother <laughs> Del Hunter during the fight. Wow. I know. I, I can tell you that John Shabbat scores, Steve shot two goal. Um, yeah, it was like a crazy game about that one over there. So, um, yep, that's remember that one over there. So, um, talking about this, by the way, today uh, on this date in 2011, the Philadelphia Flyers defenseman appeared in his last game in NHL game. He was a great defenseman for St. Louis Blues. Sir, when was what year was this? Twenty eleven. He was also part of the. Um, I think he worked for the NHL. Chris Pronger. What? Chris Pronger? No. Yep. Chris Pronger. Yep. Let me move this one. Uh, Remember who was traded for by Mike Keenan? Yeah. Tra- Keenan traded Brendan Shanahan to get Chris Pronger to Hartford. On this day, at least. <laughs> Chris Pronger, he goes, this guy is horrible. He's out of shape. <laughs> He's so fat. <laughs> on this date, on this date uh, 2006, he scored his 600 goal in any show. Who did? Oh. Jagger. Jagger. Oh, on this date, on foot slain, two, and already 10 years. Unbelievable. Pat Burns passed away 10 days. Wow, 10 really? Days. That's crazy. 10 that years bad. ago. That's amazing. By the yeah. way, today, 2007, the goalie Islanders earned his 100 game in NHL. I don't know how much he played, but after that, but the who for the New York Islanders, 2007, play his 100 game in NHL. He has the biggest contract as a goalie. For that what? Rick DiPietro. Here we go. So that was the the last um, was the last one and. Um, and NHL news. Fun. All right. That, that's awesome. <laughs> Memory lane. Do you want to go to the Pittsburgh Penguins? It's time to go there, my friend. All right. So it's been um, an interesting off season for them. I think we'll see that they're pretty well structured. They're obviously getting older with their top players, but they're not, they're very dangerous. And I think what they're trying to do is what they've done in the past, which is retool parts that can complement Crosby, Malkin, and Latang. Um, the biggest thing that we were waiting on was the decision around, you know, Matt Murray versus Tristan Jari, but it seemed fairly obvious they wanted to move Matt Murray. I think a lot of us felt that they didn't get a lot for Matt Murray, but I think the reality was he filed for salary arbitration and it would have, and we saw what came out of that. Like he got a $6 million contract in Ottawa, which, 
and it would not have worked. So they re-signed Jari to, was it 3-6 or 3-5? So Jari is the goaltender going forward. They feel pretty confident that Casey dismissed the backup. The other notable moves, they bring in Kasperi Kapanen in an interesting move. Um, I think it's going to be a boost for Kas Kapanen. They originally drafted him, and he was part of the Phil Kessel trade from Toronto, and now he comes back to Pittsburgh. Um, they're targeting him to play with Sidney Crosby. And I think that's probably consistent with what we've seen in the past, where he's the type of player that will probably mesh well with Crosby because Crosby plays like high tempo all the time, always intense. He'll play down low, tight and around the net and Kapanen's got speed and he's not afraid to go to scoring areas and he can score. So I think it's probably a good fit. They still have Jake Gunsel on the other wing as we'll see. They also bring in Mike Matheson who is probably at the end of his rope in Florida. And I think he'll probably have a little bit of an opportunity in Pittsburgh when we look at the defensive depth. So I think he's definitely being earmarked for at least a top five role, maybe top four, maybe some power play time because they've lost Justin Schultz who was, at least a second power play unit guy. Um, so you got to think that Mike Matheson's probably going to get an opportunity to play in the power play again. Mark Jankowski, I really like pick this pick up. Um, I don't know what happened with him in Calgary. He can score from the third line. He's a big guy. He's maybe not a beautiful skater, but he's not a horrible skater. And this is a guy that I think is very useful for them and will anchor a third line for them. We see they move on from Jack Johnson as well, which I think was probably smart. He shockingly gets signed again and with the New York Rangers. <clears throat> I don't really think that's going to help them, but that's more of the same for them, the type of defenseman he is. Uh, we see prospect-wise, one of the picks they get in the Matt Murray deal, they get uh, Joel Blomqvist, so they already have a goaltender prospect. Sam Poulin's probably, I think, their top prospect right now, but one thing we know about them is other guys bubble to the top with this team. They find guys late in rounds that nobody else identifies. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, you mentioned this guy that they drafted, Lucas Vejkovsky, who's playing um, in the U.S. development camp, or at least was. Uh, interesting, they also draft Chase Yoder, who is a player that I got to scout a little bit with the Dallas um, Stars Elite when he was younger, and now he's at the U.S. development program. So they've got some players that have some potential there from this year's draft. Judd Caulfield's an interesting one because that's the older brother, I believe, of Cole Caulfield, but he's not as good for sure. Um, but Sam Poulin is definitely, I think, their top prospect right now. Kalen Addison could play. Philip Hollander they're looking at might be able to play. So those are guys down the line that could pop through. They've done a pretty good job of finding parts because what they really – if you in the end, if we look at this team, look at Malkin's points, and he missed time, but he still gets 74 points in 55 games. Crosby misses a bunch of time, and you hit it the other day. Malkin immediately picks up the slack. So I've never seen a team that could lose the, you know, arguably the top four player in the NHL, and then they have another top four, five player that can pick up the slack and actually double his scoring. And he's throughout his career done this for them. Um, Chris Letang had a pretty injury-free season after having some crazy heart problems in the past. Jake Gunsel, you know, missed a bunch of times, so that's not good for them because. We can see he's still he's on he's a forty goal scorer in the NHL like he's a very talented player, so you basically lose your top line for at least twenty games between um, Crosby and Gunsel. They move on from Patrick Hornquist who goes to the Florida Panthers. <clears throat> they move on from Dominic Cahoon at the end of the year who was actually a pretty offensively productive player. Um, Teddy Bluger we know can get some points and he's capable kind of bottom six. Dominic Simon, I think they – did they move on from Dominic Simon too, right? Yep. yep. Interesting. <clears throat> they definitely moved on from Alex Kelchenik, who did not fit into their culture. So he moves on to Ottawa. So we, they've moved out some point, some uh, parts. They don't bring back Bukestad. They don't bring back Marlowe. Uh, again, I think that for me, Poulin's probably their top prospect – there's some other parts that could fit in and out, but I think for me, he's probably got the most upside. Don't be surprised if somebody shocks you. But in the end, the top six look very deep on this team. The key will be their health. Uh, no, Not too many teams have a Crosby Malkin down the middle who are still capable of playing at as high a level as anybody. <clears throat> I think they're, they're earmarking Kapanen. We see guys that are similar to Kapanen like Zucker and Rust, 
have carved out, you know, careers in Pittsburgh where they get probably much higher stats than we've seen. Like you would not think Zucker, well, Zucker has scored a lot in Minnesota. So he's capable of getting you 25, 27 goals. Rust has been almost a point of game player since he's been in Pittsburgh. And I don't think anybody would have thought Brian Rust is that type of player. Their bottom six, we see what they're doing. They have guys that can chip in eight to 12 goals. They're good defensively. They can pick up PP time. So they're, they're pretty good size or speed. So they all got to be able to skate and they all have, you know, they're aggressive guys that close the gap. So they're pretty deep. It's pretty tough to suggest that they're not going to be a top team on D you might have some concerns here, right? Like Chris Letang point a game defense when there's not too many guys like him, but he is getting older. Brian Dumoulin we know is very useful. I don't think he should be playing on a top pairing, but you know, he's capable of logging 18 minutes and he's solid. Um, John Marino's underrated defenseman that's legitimately a number four, I think. Michael Matheson has an opportunity here. They brought in Marcus Peterson a few years ago from Anaheim, and he's shown he's a you know he's got a favorable contract and he'll play 18 minutes a game for them. Uh Chad Rudwill is or Wildall, I never pronounce his name correctly. He actually can chew up some time, but they could probably use a top four D in my opinion. I, I think that would be the only move I would see out of this group. In net, I think they're very solid. Tristan Jari um, was a great WHL goalie, great in the AHL, and he's been great in the NHL. And even though he kind of popped on the radar for people last year, the reality is the season before in camp, he was their best goalie by far. And they sent him back to the AHL to make time for Matt Murray. Casey DeSmith, we saw two years ago, was a very capable goaltender in the NHL. So they feel very confident. Even though he's a little older, they know what they're getting with them. He'll probably pick up, you know, if in a full season, like 25 games, 28 games, and then Tristan Jari will pick up the balance. Uh, they bring in Colton Sevier, by the way. But Lafferty's, you know, actually pretty capable. We'll see what happens with Zach Aston Reese. I know he had injury problems last year. Um, I'm just going to switch this around. So cap-wise, it's really weird to me. They continuously trade their first-round pick, which we know is a later-round pick, but you know they're going for it all in. They think that they have the depth and the scoring. They have a very structured salary cap. You know, Because they committed to Malkin and Crosby a long time ago, they have very, very favorable contracts now. This really serves them well. Gunsel, I mean, how many 40-goal scorers get $6 million a year? Is he a 40 goal scorer on other teams? It's questionable, but he's definitely one on Pittsburgh. Uh, Jason Zucker at 5.5, he's a 25 to 30 goal scorer in his career, and he'll do the same in Pittsburgh. Tanev, I think at 3.5 is probably a little expensive for me. And they have a lot of years left on that. So that one might be the end. They give him no movement clause. So as much as everybody loves Brandon, he's the brother of Chris Tanev. He's got similar qualities, but he's a different, like personal qualities. But he's a different type of player. He's a you know speedy forward that can kill penalties and chip in offensively, um, and he can play in an offensive line. I, for me, this is a little expensive. I think Kapanen's going to play top six, probably paired with Sidney Crosby, and he's going to be a 20-25 goal scorer again. Jared McCann, I really like this. I mean, he's produced very well since he's came come to Pittsburgh. It's probably a product of who he's playing with and the fact that he got additional responsibilities when Crosby was injured. Um, but you see, they got serviceable guys. I think the Jankowski contract's going to really be favorable to them. He'll get, you know, 10, 15 goals from the third line, and he'll anchor a third line. We know where Evan Rodriguez is a useful forward, can play center and, and wing. Their defense, like Matheson at 4'8", might be a little expensive, but he's going to get an opportunity to play power play. You can just see based on depth. I forgot about Cody Cece. I did not like this contract. It's cheap-ish. Um, but man, he was terrible in Toronto and he was terrible in Ottawa. So I, I don't know. They've had a history of reclaiming guys like that and surrounding them with talent and putting them in the right situation. So maybe Cody CC does okay. Um, at three, five, Kristen Jari's contract's very favorable. Casey DeSmith at one, two is a little surprising, but you know, he's going to play backup and he's capable of playing 20, 25, 28 games. Um, they're going to have to re-sign John Marino. And he's probably top four for them. So he'll eventually get more money. But for now, you know, it's a pretty favorable contract for the season. Funny enough, they still have a little bit of space. <laughs> I don't know. How. 
they need another D, I think, but they're going to go yeah. with. If you think about this, they have, first of all, they have $1.3 million um, on their salary cap. The second thing, they already signed a 23 roster name on it. Yeah. Here's the problem when you go over while the pick is this part of them. Next year, they have only one round number two, round number five, and three pick round number seven. So that gives you an idea what they are not something. <clears throat> that's been their pattern, right? Like if we look no. at if they're, you look about, they're trading their first round pick here, they're traded oh, here. If we go to 20, they traded here. They don't believe in first round picks. <laughs> so if you look about the Easter River right now, right? It's the, crazy. Last, the last since 2014, the only one they got is Samuel Poulain. Yeah. On number 21, two years ago. You have to go back only at 14 was was kept in um to get that one over there. Uh, so that gives you an idea where they don't do a lot during the draft. They, they, throw, they don't scare to rate their first round yeah. pick. Now, for them, they said is to pick between 27, 8, 9, 30, 31 is maybe better to, to get another player to reach that part of there. Look at the roster. Sure. We have Martin and Crosby and Jake Gozell. And you, you, yeah. you, can, you can read very well, right? So that's a good yeah. thing. Now, the, what it is, this part, Kapanen is a battle to Patrick, of course. I think so, because sure. the young young age, if we turn that, faster. I think you have faster and all things. After that, that's scary after that. I think, you know, if you think about Teneb, McCann, Xavier, uh, those, oh, kids, okay. those kids go about 10 gold per year at 12 gold per that's, year. That's, that's what they want for that, right? So they're probably paid too much, but if you look at how they're structured, you can see like Rust had 27 goals last year and he scored well the year before. Um, Crosby is going to bounce back from this and probably gets, you know, I'm projecting he gets in the 20, like the 30 goal range in a full season. You're going to hope he's healthy. Gunsell's a 40 goal scorer. Look at McCann's numbers. You know, you got to think Hornquist's numbers are replaced by Kapanen. I think they're better than they were last year. I don't think so because the, the problem they have is the defensive side. They are very the problem. All right, late, late ten is late ten. Now they lose Schultz. They Schultz, lose. Is not good. Schultz is not good, Pierre. He's he's definitely not the Schultz that we know from three years ago. Johnson, Johnson's right? junk. So what he's they cool. get is the part. I think what you miss is John Marino is really solid defenseman. All right, that's what I'm saying. He's top four for them. All right, he will be like top three. Well, probably. Well, I, I think, okay. Well, why is it? Look how it's spell check Latang. <laughs> uh, oh my God. It doesn't like my spelling. <laughs> um, but I agree. Like Dumoulin, we know is serviceable. Like he's not ideally a top two. I mean, the guy's a number five or a four at best. Um, they definitely could use another D. I, it's, it's why they gave too much money at Dumoulin and Pedersen. Oh, yeah. Pedersen should never get $4 million. Um, I'm trying to think how I feel about that. Pedersen's a very good defenseman. He, have, he scored two goals per game, per year. He, that's not, yeah, and that's not the type of defenseman he is. He'll chew up minutes. He can go on the PP. They're not looking for him on the power play. So that's, that is a problem. But that's my point here. Four million dollars to yeah. sell down there. Now it's, I think my Marino is the guy who's going to be on power play when Letang is not on the ice. I, I Madison know. can be the power play, but Madison is a killer at four point eight million dollars, but he can score fifteen gold per year. That's the thing I was saying. He's gonna get an opportunity to play on the power play with some really good players. Yeah. So you've got to think that their power play, they might even be one of those teams that go kind of one and four. Like you can see where Malkin moves up with this and then they have Latang, and then they, you know, they keep either Crosby or Malkin on the ice and then move in Zucker and rest. And, you know, it's they put him He's not good on defensive side. And he gave away <laughs> back a lot. So Matheson? That's his problem. Matheson? Yeah. Yeah, no, he's not. But we've seen like Justin Schultz was the same. You know, and I think this is an upgrade over Schultz for one reason. Justin Schultz injury really, really hampered his speed. Like his knee injury, he did not really come back great from that. Um, I was actually surprised that Washington grabbed him 
because he's he's going to – he does not look like the Justin Schultz of old. And his game was skating, and he was never great defensively. So I think they just put Matheson, who's not injured. There's no physical issue there. It's really like, hey, we'll cover up. And they had Jack Johnson, who's, like, not good defensively. I mean. Yeah. But that's the problem they have right now. I think they, that's what they, I agree. They, if they, they had one more D, it'd be probably perfect, right? But they are not the same time the team. Like, they are more like between top 10 and uh, not top 10, between 8, 9, 10 to 12, 15 team in NHL now, 13, 12. They are not the best in the league anymore like it was before. They, they don't have enough depth. They don't have enough. Of course, when you have Malkin. I don't know about that. How many teams have a Gunsel, Crosby, Malkin, Zucker? Like, like the, you know, Rust had 27 goals. Gunsel's a 40-goal scorer. Crosby and Malkin, at least you can pencil in in a full season for 30. I mean, Kapanen and Zucker, you know they're going to get in their 20s. Like, not many teams have that depth. Yeah, but. The issue is the D. The D is definitely an issue. The goaltending is great, but. Hey, yeah, great. I would not say great. I would say good. But I don't. Think, I don't know. I think Tristan Jari is like a top ten goalie. No, no. Really? No. No. Yeah, I think he definitely is. No, he's not. If you, I, I think that you're probably be surprised <laughs> if you look at his ranking and his numbers. So you look his save percentage will definitely put him in the top ten. Yeah, because last year had a good one, 92.1. But if you look at historically, he's actually higher. Well, you have no, you know, in 28, you have in, in 18, you have a 9.9908. The, the, what happened? Of course, he's a good goalie. I'm not saying he's yeah. good. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I guess he's his, he was above his historical average. You're actually I'm right. really not sure if he can carry on a 50 game per year by, by himself and to be that kind of goalie, like the 92 point and something like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. My experience he's going, see, he's going to see a lot of rubber this year. That's the, if, well, I think you're right. But, you know, it's hard to say. I think we'll see. They, they're not going to totally be. It's not going to be like Chicago. He's a very good goalie. He's like going to surprise you. I think. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, again, I'm not said. I'm not said like he's not good. The and point. The is, what twenty four, twenty five, yep. right? Yep. And that's the first time this this year, the coming season, they give the net to him. So you know what? Now you're the number one. You're the goalie in the organization. For sure. Yeah. Now you have to play with forty. Like this, of course, this year maybe only thirty because what's going on. But usually, if, if to jump there to fifty game per year, uh, that's a lot of responsibility for for the it first is. time. So my point to you is, I don't see him to repeat a nine point two. I see more like a nine point. I think he's going to be more about two point five to two point seven because the defensive of the 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 Pittsburgh are not great like they was. They, were, they weren't great last year. It was two point forty three. That's what I'm saying. If you look at the roster, they're better than probably last year. <laughs> they have only played three games. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's maybe a risk, but I I, I think it's probably not really that big of a risk. I think he's better than Matt Murray. Oh, no, and I said that. I, I don't said my, my point to you. He, he, he's not a Carter Hart. He's not like you know Carey Price. He's not like you know. I don't. I think Max Strom is better to him. I think just based on history, maybe, but yeah. at, the, at the same age, he's definitely ahead of where Markstrom was. Like yeah, Mark Strom was and, and I think if you look at his history of every league he's been in, he's he probably, I mean, I have a hard time betting against him. Like to me, no, he's, boy, he's not like the, the, you know, a long quiz yet. He's not like those kind of goalies, like, you know, at the top, great best player in NHL goalies. I think he's on the second level. Maybe. Yeah, oh yeah, he's not top five. He's not top eight, but I think he's definitely top 10 or 12. I would put him top 15. Do you prefer him or Frederick Anderson? Oh, I think I would take Tristan Jari. All right, so. It's pretty close. That's a good comparison. So I think they're very similar. Gibson or Jerry? Sorry, what was the other one? Gibson, John Gibson. I think Gibson's way better than people realize. I mean, Gibson to me is a is a 
elite young goalie. Like he's he just at that point a great Jonathan team. Quick at this age or oh, Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan Quick, yeah. But my that's my point. Like you have the those. I don't know an extra. You know, it's like I don't know. Compare maybe I don't know. Could be uh, Crosby, Malkin, those guys versus I don't know uh, uh, Eric Stahl, right? So Eric Stahl is great, but he's not he's the not same not with Crosby. That's my that's what I try to explain. No, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you on top. I'm not saying he's a top five goalie. He, yeah. He's he's not. He hasn't proven that yet. Because to me, it's like I, exactly. I, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. I, I think that's the word. He did not prove yet. Yeah. What he's supposed, what you expect, well, for you, you say he's going to be that way. I yeah. didn't see this now. When I can talk to you in 2021, so that he, he did an amazing job. I, I, he's going to be a great goalie, but not like that level other players I'm talking about. Then that right. first level, yeah. I, I that's why I say I think he's kind of like a top 10, 12 goalie, like that's probably realistic. Yeah, John Gibson, by the way, I mean, I think he's top six or eight, like just. He's on a terrible team. <laughs> you know, that's the reason why they trade Anderson. Oh, yeah. He's way better than Anderson. Anderson's right? numbers are very good, though, aren't they? He's great. I think he, they, don't, they don't give him credit because he, he played in Toronto. It's so crazy because, it, like, he had a 9 uh, – in the playoffs, he had a 936. What do you have in the regular season? 91. Yeah, he's a real he's a real good goalie. I mean, that's pretty yeah. tough to dispute. Yep. Great. Another way. Tomorrow we have to go shift to where M N P S. Are we are we St. Louis or San Jose? San Jose. San Jose. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah, they will be like yeah, very one this one. Like yeah, I always like Doug Wilson, but uh, mm -hmm. for the last two years he's did not do very well there. Well, I mean, I think we, we're we going to see why, right? The injuries to top players, losing the depth in the lineup. Contract. The goaltending was horrible. Them. Like, did they improve the goaltending? Probably. If do, if Devin Dubnik is healthy, I think they improved the goaltending. I'm yep. not sure. Martin Jones looks like he's... He did have a good year. Though. They have, like, five, six kids. Probably last year, they didn't have a great year, and that's happening. I mean, the injuries to Meyer and those guys, that's bad, you know? Burn. Even the injuries to Carlson, like that kills you, right? Great show. Thanks. Happy Nation fans. Don't forget to come back tomorrow, 11 o'clock Eastern time. Have an amazing Thursday. Thanks, Pierre. Good job. Yeah.